So I wanted to make a video about who I consider the top 10 current prep coaches or gurus in bodybuilding today. Um, now this is just a list based off kind of my own personal beliefs, not meant to offend anyone, but there's some really well-known gurus out there and they all have strengths and weaknesses. And I just wanted to cover who I think currently is cream of the crop. Okay, there's been a lot of good guys in the past, a lot of people who have come up that are a little bit younger and more upcoming that might not be as well known as some of the other guys who have a little more brand name recognition. Okay, so what exactly makes a good guru or a good diet coach? Well, in my opinion, the most important thing is their track record. Okay, and track record can mean a lot of things. It can mean having champions, how many Olympians do you have? It can mean how many people have you turned pro? Uh, it can be how many people have you took from average horrible genetics to pro. It could be what's your track record of yourself getting in consistent shape or your clients getting in consistent shape. So it's pretty variable. Okay, first I want to go over some honorable mentions because there's a lot of good coaches out there and I wasn't able to cover everybody I wanted to in the top 10. So we have Jason Theobald. He's a really knowledgeable guy. I've seen him on the Geared Up podcast a lot. It has really good information. Um, you look at his client page on his Instagram, lots of really good transformations. I just think the information he puts out is so solid, and he just recently became a pro, and especially for women. I think he's a really good coach for uh, a lot of women, and he also helped out Matt Jansen early in his career. Okay. Uh, another honorable mention goes to Dave Palumbo. Now, Dave Palumbo was a beast back in the day. Never turned pro, but he was able to get such a sick level of conditioning at just an insane size. Okay? Um, you know, he's really known for the keto diet, which I'm a fan of. Uh, I, I think Dave was a pretty good coach. You know, you look at what he did with uh, Akeem Williams, who you're seeing right now. Akeem Williams did great with Dave in 2016. He won the New York, he won the Tampa Pro, and he never, never looked as good after he left and went to the Camel Crew. The problem with Dave is that he's just so old school, and he's a little stuck in his ways in certain things, and I feel like he could, you know, be a little bit more willing to try some new things. Next, we have Thackeray Mubarak. You know, he is known for turning people pro. Uh, he, that's what his moniker is, I believe the pro creator, or pro maker, whichever one. Um, he, has, he keeps track of how many pro cards he has, really known on the East Coast. Uh, Tristan Escanlisito worked with him. I just don't know a whole lot about his methods, to be honest, but he had a sick physique and was a pretty good looking pro himself. Uh, another honorable mention goes to Chad Nichols, who's most famously known for probably working with Ronnie Coleman, but he also worked with a lot of guys in the 90s. In fact, he worked with Ronnie's nemesis, Flex Wheeler, when they competed against each other. He also worked with Flex during his comeback. Uh, he worked with a lot of the top guys in the in the 90s. Um, he's also known for taking over for Dallas McCarver after he left Matt Jansen. And, you know, some people put a little bit of blame on him, actually, for the unfortunate tragedy that happened. They said he pushed Dallas a little too hard. So I don't really have an opinion, but that's why he's on the honorable mention and not the top 10. You can't have one of your clients die. Um, Scott Stevenson amazing guy. If you don't know who he is, you definitely need to check him out and become familiar with his work. He's the author of Fortitude Training. He's one of the smartest guys in the industry. He trains David Henry um, like through everything. He's his chiropractor. His, he does his acupuncture. He does his training. He's a super knowledgeable guy. He just doesn't work with a whole lot of top pros, but I would love to be coached by him. Um, and we have Amin Ali, Ali, also known as the Mad Scientist. Now, Amin came up in the early 90s um, with guys like King Kamali and Craig Titus he worked with. Uh, and he was a really young guy at the time. And he was really known for a little bit more out there kinds of protocols as far as training protocols, really long, high rep things. And also for um, different things with growth hormone and insulin pulsing. He's currently kind of associated with Enhanced Athlete and Tony Huge and working with those guys. All right, so now we've made it to the top 10. Number 10 is George Farah. Okay, so George Farah was an IFBB pro himself who got in great condition, great shape. He's known for a little bit higher carb approach. He's worked with 
tons and tons of pros. Uh, worked with Jose Raymond when he was young. He's really famous for working with Kai Green. That's probably his most well-known client. He's worked with Dexter Jackson. Um, he's worked with Dana Lynn Bailey. So he definitely has a track record of successful clients. Re like I said, he's really one of the best known gurus in the game today. He just recently, um, as far as I know, overcame cancer, which is great. I'm really glad to hear about that. Um, he also has worked with, you know, Branch Warren extensively in the past. I mean, I would say, I'd venture to say, of all the top, you know, 15 Olympians over the last 10 years, um, a good percentage of them worked with him at some point. Problem is, he doesn't seem to keep his people. Coming at number nine, I got Matt Porter. Now, Matt was a really high-level NPC competitor. I know he placed second at least once in pro qualifying events, but he never got his pro card. Uh, but he's a really well-known coach. He's, he's all over social media. He makes the rounds on a lot of the podcasts. He's a really well-spoken guy, and he's known for just bringing in insane conditioning. He brought it in himself, and he brings it in his competitors like um, Terrence Ruffin in the Classic Physique Division, who... He looks amazing, even though he gets robbed in his placings every single year. But uh, he also trains Natalie Kohala, who's probably my favorite woman in, woman in the IFBB. She is just phenomenal. She was a figure competitor, and now she moved to women's physique, and she's just hard as nails. Uh, I also know a couple people who've trained with Matt personally, and I've seen his protocols, and I, I'm a fan of a lot of things he does. I, I, I've heard he's really big on DNP, but I, I don't know if that's for sure. I haven't seen that, uh, but I'm not a fan of that. Uh, he trained Santi Aragon for one of his 212 shows. He also helped David Patrick uh, become a pro. He also has a supplement company, uh, MPA Subs, which has some really good products. And all around, I agree with a lot of the things he does nutritionally as well. So I, I think Matt would be a really good coach to, to learn from. Uh, the problem is he just doesn't train a lot of the top-level pros. And usually there's a reason why you don't stick with a coach if you're at the top level. Um, coming at number eight, this is a guy that you guys might not know. Um, he is the head trainer at the Oxygen Gym out in Kuwait. His name is Ahmed Oscar. Now, he's been training uh, Ahmed Ashkenani for a long time. He's also the head trainer for uh, Roly Winkler and Nate Diasha. And as far as I know, these are the main three he's, he's most heavily involved with. But he, he trains everybody out there in Kuwait. You know, he's involved with everyone who's out part of the camel crew. And these guys just put on crazy size. And they do a couple of things a little differently, you know, the, the way they, they train. I know they train really uh, high volume, a little shorter rest, more ramping up sets. They don't really go to failure or push super extreme heavy weights. Uh, and this guy is definitely doing something right. In addition to all of these pros that you know, he's one of the top trainers out in the, in the Middle East. He, a lot of these uh, guys from these, these foreign countries out here train with him. He's really well known and he's got some insane looking guys that you just don't get to see because they don't compete here in the IFBB. Uh, but I just don't know a lot about him either. So I, I can't really rate him any higher just because I'm not real sure of his methods. And what all they entail, uh, and there has been a couple people who have gone out there and not looked that great. You have John De La Rosa uh, come to mind, as long as a, as well as a couple others. Okay, coming at number seven, I have Jordan Peters. Now, if you guys don't know who this is, he is a mass monster out uh, overseas in England. Uh, he's a really popular trainer over there. He has a really popular website called Train by JP. He's on a podcast called Muscle Minds with Dr. Scott Stevenson. That's one of my favorites. And this, this is a pretty young guy who's going to turn pro for sure. And he has done some great things with some people that he's worked with currently. Uh, one guy that he's done amazing things with is James Hollinshead. Now, this what really what I really like about this is this is a good case study of how good of a coach JP really is. So, James Hollinshead, they did three shows together trying to win his pro card in the UK. So, to win a pro card in the UK, you have to win the overall at the UK BFF finals. So, they only give away like one pro card a year. And it's what, you know, Dorian's won. It's what uh, Nate Diasha won. Sass Harati won that, who Jordan also trains. Uh, and so this is really your only shot to become a pro if you're overseas in, in England, at least at this time. It was one of the, the, the most prestigious ways, at least. So James Hollinshead didn't place very well in their first show together. And they kind of made some adjustments. And then he looked a lot better a few weeks later. And they did another show. And he got second at that show. And they made just a couple more adjustments. And then come the finals, another few weeks later, 
he wins the overall, beating people who had who he'd lost to. So this is a great case study of how you know a good coach makes adjustments. You know, people go to him to put on size. He's a very dense guy. He's currently training uh, Sasan Harati, and I think he's going to look phenomenal next year. Uh, the only problem with Jordan, I would say, is uh, he's still really young, and there's things he's learning, and you can you can see that in in his talks. A lot of times he, you know, may not have complete foresight just because he hasn't doesn't have all the experience and there's things he's learning on the go that he's adapting so I think he's going to be an even better trainer and I would love to train with right now but that's why I can't place him any higher okay. so that's going to do it for part one I'm going to get a little bit more in depth of the top six and go a little bit more uh, into details as far as the pros and cons of each of those because I know them a little bit better and, and we can get a little bit more into the nitty-gritty all right check back for that one thanks